The new Tesla Model 3 Performance just picked up this car this morning. Only driven to work, we've put a couple of stickers on it, so when we're out and about, you know who we are. Uh, but this is going to be my first road trip, so it's a Friday afternoon, about to head away and down to Cornwall for the weekend. So I'm going to be putting a few miles in this car straight away. Let's see exactly what it does for real world range efficiency with a family. Really mixed conditions for weather today. It's sunny, then it's raining, it's quite windy out there. So very much a real world test. Let's see what it does. Now, we did plenty of videos with the long range, non-performance. So do check out other channels if you want to see how that does for real world efficiency and range. But what about the performance? Bigger wheels, bigger tires, bigger motor, faster car. Let's see exactly what it does. So just get in the car now. It's 10 to two in the afternoon. We'll reset a trip. The battery's got 86% now. So I'm leaving with 86% of the battery. Let's see what it does. Okay, here we go. So just for a bit of background information, the car's reading 18 degrees Celsius. A real mixed bag of weather today. It's warm and sunny right now. And uh, then it's raining. Uh, it's very windy today. We have just set all the tire pressures to exactly 42 PSI each because actually when I picked up this car this morning, they were a bit all over the place. There was 41 on one, 44 on another. I don't know why they'd be so varied and they should have all been perfect, but nonetheless they weren't, but we have now put them exactly as they should be. I'm still going for an indicator stalk at the moment, but I did find before with the Highland that I could very easily get used to the indicators on the steering wheel. So personally, I didn't find that a problem. But again, after spending a bit of time in this, doing a long trip, uh, even as a whole family, we'll all get, a, again, more opinion on this car. Uh, my first stop, as I set off now, is actually to go and pick up some wireless earphones so my daughter can watch the screen in the back. So she loved that. On my previous car, we sold the earphones with the car. So I'll uh, go and get some of them in a minute. But again, first impressions of this car. I did a quick video as I picked it up this morning. It is nice and smooth. I like the adaptive dampers, so that's good. Let's see how it is on a road trip though. just stopped at Lifton in Cornwall. I've spent over three hours in this seat since I left uh, near home, since I picked my daughter up from school. So we've stopped for what is a toilet break. Firstly, the efficiency. Look, I'll show you what it is. Okay, look, 299 watt hours per mile there. And you can see I've been in the car for over three hours. So uh, that's not brilliant, but that has been preheating for these chargers for the last 40 odd minutes, 45 minutes, quite a long time. So it was running about 270 watt hours per mile before that. Is that better than the previous version of the Model 3 long range performance? It's about the same, if I'm honest. Uh, if it, as long as it's a 2021 onwards car, if it's a pre-2021 Model 3 performance, they, that would be less efficient. But compared to the last version, I think it's about the same. It only went up to 300 watt hours per mile once, we, um, once the, the preheating was happening. Now, I calculated, arrived here with 25%, left with 86%, used, did 146 miles. So that would pro rata to a real world range of 240 miles, which isn't brilliant. Is it about the same as before? Yeah, probably, uh, given the conditions, which has been solid traffic, um, pouring rain, driving fast. Uh, somebody <laughs> there think knows me. Uh, and probably worst case scenario, we've got you know family in the car, and let me show you actually the state of this car, right? It's, it's got 176 miles and already there's family life. Uh, there's Chris on the back seat already. I told him to be careful and there's stuff everywhere. So there is stuff all over the place already, but uh, it's a car, you've got to use it, enjoy it. So um, the efficiency and real world range, I think is about the same as the previous version of the Model 3 Performance, which is still better than the pre-2021. Be pre is it quicker? Doesn't feel like it. Maybe a little bit off the line, like the launch section of uh, the performance, but it doesn't really feel any quicker. And certainly when you're driving standard, not insane, it's definitely got a kind of softer throttle pedal to it. Um, so it, it's, there's no kind of obvious massive changes apart from 
you've got the better ride. So yes, if you put the suspension or the driving dynamics in sport, it feels kind of similar to suspension to before. But if you go to standard, then the ride is soft and it's nice. It's nice and comfortable. It feels more like the Highland long range I had, the non-performance. It's, it's quite reasonable and quite comfortable. Gains in performance, nothing obvious. Gains in efficiency, don't think so. Gains in range, don't think so. Gains in ride comfort, yes, seat is a bit better. That's my quick impression so far. But we're going to call it quits for today. We're going to go on to our hotel a little bit further down the road. But again, I'll record the efficiency for the whole trip and as see things as we go. The charging speed, similar to the long ranges we've had, we've got the same 79 kilowatt hour battery, which is okay. I mean, I'm at 56% battery and I'm charged at 93 kilowatts. It's nothing amazing, to be honest. Other cars would charge faster. Uh, but nonetheless, it's quick enough. By the time I go in and go to the toilet and that sort of stuff, we'll be good to carry on, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. All right, guys, what you're seeing here is a bit of a montage from Saturday. We've actually spent a, most of the day driving around in Cornwall. So we drove down on Friday night, stayed in Bodmin at the excellent Bodmin Jowl Hotel. Highly recommend it. Uh, but yes, Saturday we spent basically driving around. We went to Padstow, went to Newquay, went to Perrinpools, went to Port Town, one of our favourite places. And basically that's because we had our wedding reception there 17 years ago. So that's why we're away in Cornwall for this weekend. We love it. We've been coming here ever since we started going out together 27 years ago. So yes, I am that old. Big thanks to my wife uh, for being so special and putting up with me. We did quite a lot of driving because we finished our dinner at the excellent Blue Bar and then we decided, actually we've still got a couple of hours before sunset, let's go to Land's End. I haven't been there for ages. Well, I did on that John Grosser Land's End video. If you haven't seen that one, I think I set a record for the fastest time in an electric car. Uh, where I drove from John O'Groats to Land's End, completely kind of unplanned as well. So check out other videos for that, but that was great. But we ended up at Land's End really for sort of sunset last night. And then we, we drove back, driving back gave me a chance to sort of test the headlights, which are the Active Matrix, which are pretty good. Um, again, it's sort of better out there, but they're good, they're good, they're good, they're okay. Anyway, the efficiency with that real mixed bag of driving yesterday, all the hills of Cornwall and, and just not trying in and out of the car all day long. A couple of times we used dog mode as well, going to a restaurant to eat and that kind of stuff. I averaged there about 280 watt hours per mile, which is I think about what I would have got from the previous Model 3 performance, to be honest. So, okay, real world range, just doing that kind of driving for a day would be about 245 miles, 250. It's not amazing, but again, probably with that kind of conditions, in line with what the previous car would get. On a longer journey, when you can get better efficiency, um, you know, I think it will improve. And in fact, if it stays dry today, then maybe we get a chance a bit later on to see what we get on a long, longer journey efficiency as we drive back. Right, there we have it, 8 p.m. on Sunday evening, we're back home and let's have a look at the efficiency today. Better actually, uh, better weather, drier, sunnier, so that was good. But today's driving, again, as we left Cornwall, we went down to Plymouth, I went and saw my granddad was born and grew up in Plymouth. And then, so like a bit of round town, a bit more touring along the southern coast. So I ended up at Salcombe, beautiful place. Again, if you've been there, you know how steep the hills are up and down, narrow lanes, all that kind of stuff. And then back out, past external along the Jurassic coastline, uh, back to home here. So the efficiency is definitely real world. We've got a loaded car, family, luggage, and mixture of driving conditions, a bit of everything, but it was dry today. So today we averaged 262 watt hours per mile. So we're coming up on four miles per kilowatt hour there. And I think that's not bad at all. We've got 5% battery left. Uh, we could have charged at a number of places, but just didn't need it. So we left at 80% from Bodmin, toured all the coastline, come back up, got home, 202 miles later, still got 5% battery left. And obviously I'll just plug it in tonight. So if you pro rata 75% used to cover 202 miles, you get to about 270 miles of range based on those conditions today. 
which I think again is a mixed bag. So I think if you're the last bit, actually, my wife drove for the for the last uh, for the 45 minutes hour there, and she got much better over four miles per kilowatt hour actually. So she's more efficient driver than me. Uh, but I think if you just had the long journey on a motorway in decent weather, then you should be able to get even better efficiency. That probably about four miles per kilowatt hour quite happily. And I think then that would actually be a bit better than the older car potentially. All in all, like if you've got the 2021 to 2023 Model 3 performance, the newer 2024 in the UK, Europe at least, with a 79 kilowatt hour battery, unlike the 82 in America, isn't going to give you a better range particularly, I don't think. The performance difference isn't particularly noticeable, I don't think. But to be fair, we've just been in the standard because, you know, we're family in the car. We're not going to hammer it. But the standard is very quick and you do just get like a nice progressive, you don't get the kind of violence in the uh, in the acceleration. It's nice actually. And then I'll do a bit more driving with Insane and we've got a track day coming up and all that kind of stuff. I have to say, I've been loving the handling, the feel, those country roads in Cornwall, some of those roads sweeping around. The handling of this car is fantastic. It's great. Feels really good. I mean, the Highland in general does feel a bit different in the turning than um, the previous cars. So uh, you will notice the Highland's got a slightly nicer steering feel about it, I think. And this is even better. This is a performance one being even better. The new seats are okay, but I must admit, like, again, I, I've sort of been finding that I've had an achy bag. That's why we got out and actually why we swapped places driving in the end. So I basically find them okay and better than any seats I've ever had in the Model 3 before. But it'd be nice just to kind of do a couple of last little bits to make them really perfect. The car is nice and quiet and refined, but there are certain surfaces where these tyres pick up on a sort of thrumming kind of resonance with the road surfaces. There's a couple of little bits about the car which aren't quite brilliant and I'm going to do a full review video. I mean, I've done 560 miles in this car now in, in three days. So I've obviously spent a few hours behind the wheel and I will review the whole car as a whole, what I like and don't like. Overall, great car, a few little niggles and I'll go through them in another video. So make sure you stay subscribed. But that's it for this weekend road trip away down to Cornwall, right down to Land's End and back again. Over 500 miles covered and a good gauge of mixed real world efficiency if you're traveling around the Cornwall coastline in June in not brilliant weather. So I hope that's useful, interesting and we'll see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.